Hi class. I just wanted to make a couple cooking videos for you guys this week because we obviously can't be in class, we are not at school, and so we don't get to cook together. So I'm going to share a couple different recipes this week and the first one today is a butternut squash soup. So um, I've chosen a butternut squash soup because we talked about local foods, uh, different food systems, and so uh, here it is in January, but butternut squash is a food that you can still purchase locally. It's still in season here in Ontario. So um, we've got an Ontario butternut squash and also um, Ontario onions that are in season and they're both gonna go into the soup today. So to start, um, I've washed my hands and I've already washed my squash. So cutting a butternut squash can be a little bit difficult. Um, for this recipe, sometimes you have a recipe where you just cube up your squash and you cook it all in the pot at once. And in this case, it's a roasted butternut squash recipe. So we're actually going to cook the squash beforehand. Um, and so I've got my oven preheating and we're gonna chop up this squash and get it ready to go in. So I'm gonna start by taking the stem off one end. Just use a big chef's knife and make sure that you use a cutting board. Okay, and then to cut it, we're gonna kind of cut it right down the middle lengthwise. This isn't always the easiest thing, but you just have to do it as safely as you can. And uh, it should go through, it's kind of like the texture of pumpkin and squash is in the same family as pumpkin and zucchini. And so when you see inside, it'll have like a nice bright orange flesh and some seeds. And so we gotta scoop out these seeds just like you would if you were carving a jack-o-lantern at Halloween or something. And then I'll just have a bowl here to put my seeds into um, before it goes in the oven. And squash, I mean, this is something that's going to be really healthy. Uh, usually vegetables that have this bright orange color, they uh, are really high in vitamin A. And so a serving of squash, a whole cup of squash, which, which you'd get in a serving of this soup, it'll have about, uh, I would say, over 100% of your daily requirement of vitamin A. Squash is also uh, a good source of vitamin C. It's also a really good source of potassium. And then of course, it's a vegetable, so it's got a lot of fiber in it. So it's something that's good for you. And uh, it's a good way to eat your veggies, especially if you're not a huge vegetable fan. You know, getting your vegetables in soup is a, a nice way to do it. So we've got our squash. Um, we've got it cut in half, taken the seeds out. Usually before I roast in the oven, I just put a little bit of olive oil on it and a sprinkle of salt, and then we're gonna cook it flush side down, okay? So rub in a bit of oil on your squash, and then just a little sprinkle of, you know, maybe some kosher salt, some sea salt, okay? And then face down onto a tray. So my cookie sheet I've just done with a bit of tin foil just for easier cleanup because the squash, as it roasts, it might kind of uh, caramelize onto your pan and this is just an easier way to keep it clean. So, like I said before, the oven is preheated to 400 degrees and then I'm gonna cook that probably for at least a half an hour, maybe even 45 minutes. And then I'll come back and show you how to make the soup. Thanks. Hey guys, welcome back. The squash is all done. It's been nicely roasted in the oven. As you can see, it should sort of uh, go kind of golden brown and there's caramelization, which really adds to the flavor. That's why I like to roast the squash for this recipe instead of just cook it in the soup. So uh, we'll start the soup. I've done a little uh, mise en place. Um, that term is really uh, just means to have everything in its place and be ready. So when you're cooking, sometimes uh, it helps to uh, get your ingredients all set out and ready to go so that you don't have to take time doing that during the process because sometimes you could accidentally overcook something. But for me, I did it too because I'm making this video and you don't want to sit and watch me chop celery or chop an onion. So I've got my uh, soup pot on the stove at about a medium heat. We're going to start by adding some olive oil, um, about a tablespoon. You don't really have to measure. Uh, it's not too important at this point. This is just to saute some of your veggies before we add our soup stock. So um, I'll start with onion and I've just diced the onion. If you don't like onion, I'm going to say to add it anyway because you're not really going to notice the texture um, of this onion because 
The one thing about this soup is that we're going to puree it all with an immersion blender later. So you won't have chunks of onion or any other vegetables. So I'll put my onion in and you just cook it for a minute or two on the stove top and then we're gonna add some celery as well. And I think that this is a good way to start any soup. Uh, even if I was making a chicken noodle soup today, I would start it exactly the same way. Saute some onions, add some celery before I add my soup stock. So once you make a lot of soup, you really kind of follow the same process every time and it just becomes easier the more soups you make. I don't even use a recipe most of the time. However, I did type this one out and it'll be in the um, description of the video and I'll put it on our Brightspace page as well. So our onions looking good. I just move that around with a wooden spoon and I'm gonna add my celery as well. And again, just diced celery. I used about two stalks of celery there. It's, a, it's about maybe half a cup of diced celery. So we want to get it so that the onion turns translucent. So you usually have to cook it for a couple of minutes. Um, I can show you what it looks like so far, um, just to give you an idea. But again, probably around medium heat because you don't want to burn or overcook this. Um, so it's looking kind of nice. And the onion goes kind of like a slightly yellow translucent color and that'll be how you know that it's ready. Some people add their spices at this point. I'm gonna wait until I add um, my squash and everything. So at this point, this is looking pretty good. Our next step will be to add some soup broth. I'm going to use a vegetable broth today uh, just because uh, we'll make this vegetarian or vegan. Actually, this soup today will be vegan. Um, if you don't have veggie broth, and you're not a vegetarian, you can use chicken broth that also works just fine. Um, some people use like a reduced sodium broth to make it a little bit healthier, or sometimes I've even made my own broth. But the homemade broth I have is a turkey broth, and today I'm making this vegetarian, so I won't use it. Anyway, we'll add in our vegetable broth. Just one carton will do it. This is about uh, just under a liter, uh, these cartons to give you an idea of how much to add because some people make their own broth with uh, bouillon cubes or something like that. So I've added that in and I'm going to turn up my heat to high because I want to bring it to a boil and if you want something to boil faster put a lid on top and keeps the heat in. So I'm going to pause the video for a minute because I want to uh, take the skin off my squash that I've roasted so that I can add the flesh in for you. Okay? Okay, we're back and we've got our squash all peeled. And uh, you can see I've just put it in a bowl. I've peeled the skin off the squash um, and it's ready to go in the soup. The soup has come to a boil. So just, uh, I'll try and do this kind of gently so it doesn't splash all over the place. And I mean, it's still kind of in big pieces, but it doesn't matter. It's already um, cooked all the way through. And the other thing too, like I mentioned, we're gonna use an immersion blender and just blend it all up. So at this point, you can break it up a little bit smaller with your wooden spoon, but this is nice and soft, it's all been cooked. So I'm gonna add that to our soup. And then the other ingredient that I'm gonna add is actually uh, a diced apple. It just gives a little bit of sweetness to the soup. So I just used a Macintosh apple, but you could use whatever you have on hand. It doesn't really matter. Sometimes I add one apple, sometimes I add two. Um, but that apple will have to cook a little bit in the soup as well. So we've turned it down now because it's come up to a boil, but we don't want it to bubble all over the place. We just want it to simmer. So I'll put my lid back on. And uh, we'll, the other thing we'll just add before um, it simmers for the 20 minutes is the spices. So I'm gonna put in today some curry powder and some garam masala. So if you're not used to those spices, uh, you can just use any kind of curry powder. Curry powder is not necessarily one spice, it's actually a blend of spices. So what's in this is got coriander, turmeric, celery seed, fenugreek, black pepper, cumin, ginger, nutmeg, chili pepper, onion powder, cloves, a whole bunch of different spices in here. And then garam masala, this is my favorite blend of garam masala that I use. Uh, but again, it's also a blend of spices. So this has coriander seeds, cumin seeds, cinnamon, black peppercorns, cloves, fennel seeds, um, chili flakes, dried curry leaves. So again, a, a blend of spices, 
And so I've done kind of a curried butternut squash soup today, but you could always do different spices if you don't like curry. A lot of people don't like curry. And so another blend of spices that you could use for this exact same soup, do everything the same, but instead of adding curry and garam masala, you could maybe add some thyme, some rosemary and some sage. Uh, those are common spices that are uh, put into a butternut squash soup. Um, so I'd recommend that if you're not a huge fan of curry. So I've got uh, this simmering now. It should probably simmer for a good 20 minutes and then you can kind of stir it occasionally every now and then, you know, just give it a little stir. But just simmering it is going to allow the spices to kind of uh, just um, get their flavor out into the soup. Everything will get cooked down. And then again, after that 20 minute mark, we're going to get out our immersion blender, blend it all up into a nice smooth consistency. Okay. Okay, we've had a chance to let the soup simmer for about 20 minutes, and I'll show you what uh, it looks like at this point. Um, you can see it's just kind of all uh, simmered together. It's kind of mushed up, but it's not as mushed up as we want it because we're going to puree it. So this is what I was talking about when I mentioned an immersion blender. Um, so it's a blender that you put into your soup and you're gonna mix it up. So it's got a nice um, blade on the bottom. So be careful when you wash something like this and use something like this. Um, if you don't have an immersion blender and you still want to puree your soup, I would suggest uh, sometimes I can you can scoop out the uh, vegetables, put them in a blender or food processor and blend them that way and just add them back in if you want a nice smooth soup. So. Uh, the last things that I will add to this soup before we blend it is just some salt and pepper. Um, so fresh cracked pepper is always better. And uh, I'll add a bit of salt. I mentioned before that you can kind of control the amount of sodium uh, if you buy like a low sodium broth. Soup tends to have a bad reputation for being high in salt. So that's why I would say you can kind of use those herbs and spices to flavor your soup and add less salt but I always just uh, add some because you always want a little bit. It helps bring out those other flavors and then taste it. And then you'll know if you need to add more or not. Okay, so I'll start to blend this, but as you'll hear in a second, it's very loud, but it will we'll just mix it around and I will blend this off camera so that you don't have to sit and listen to this the whole time. And then I'll show you what it looks like as a final product. Okay, so our soup is all pureed. Um, so it's nice and smooth consistency without chunks of vegetables in it. And you can do this if you made a sweet potato soup, a carrot ginger soup, uh, maybe a homemade tomato soup. And then when you puree the vegetables, um, a lot of people tend to like it more, just especially if you're somebody who doesn't like the texture of chunks of vegetables in their soup. Um, so the final product I'll attempt to kind of show you here, but I'll take some pictures and put them up. But you can see that it's nice and smooth. Um, and some people like to add cream at this stage. Uh, if you want to keep it uh, vegan or vegetarian, then you could uh, drizzle in a little bit of uh, coconut milk. Uh, some people add a little bit of heavy cream when they serve it, uh, just to give it a more creamy consistency. And the one other thing I was going to mention was that if you want to make this um, with some protein, you can always add lentils. So lentils are something that you could just cook right in uh, the soup as you cook it or just add a can of lentils and then you just puree those in when you're pureeing the vegetables and you'll have that nice smooth consistency but the lentils are going to add more protein and also more fiber. So thank you for uh, watching today. I'll try and get better at these videos for you guys and later this week I'm hoping to uh, bake something and it should be something easy that you'll be able to try at home. Okay see you later.